The Nigerian Bar Association, NBA, has warned security operatives against the continuous use of live bullets on peaceful protesters. The NBA warned that this will continue to aggravate an already tensed atmosphere, which is one of the demands of thousands of youths nationwide protesting for an end to police brutality. The national president of the NBA, Olumide Akpata, uh, while speaking to Newsman in Abuja, says the NBA is willing to support an independent investigative panel set up by the police leadership and the National Human Rights Commission to investigate gross violations of human rights by the disbanded SARS. Akpata says the panel will ease the growing tensions, provide justice for aggrieved victims and restore public trust back to the force. Joining us live is virtually uh, Mitchell Agatise, who is a legal practitioner and a policy analyst. A pleasure to have you join us on The Breakfast this morning. Thank you very much for having me, Felicity. All right, the protest is in its sixth, uh, today we'll make it the seven days. It took like six days for the NBA to come up with a position. Why do you, let's start from there. Why do you think it took them this long to articulate um, their position? Well, first and foremost, um, we have to realize that um, the NBA speaking out is the NBA stepping into a place of failure of government. Um, the protesters' demands are not demands that are, you know, outlandish. They are not demands that are inconsistent to what government itself should already have been doing. So for the NBA to speak out shows that there is a gap. There's a gap that the government has failed to capitalize on. There's a gap in innovation on the part of the government, knee-jerk reactions, and that was also stated in what the NBA said, that, look, this is not about knee-jerk reactions, right? This is not just about responding to the five demands. This is more about holding the government to account and ensuring that they're even thinking ahead such that instances like this do not repeat themselves. As someone on your newsreel just said, you know, you've had bans in 2017, the solutions in 2018, restructurings in 2019. So it's a situation where, look, beyond these five simple demands, right, you know, we should even be the ones seeing the government laying down such a long note as to what is the short term, what's the mid term, what's the long term. We've not seen that from the government. Instead, what we've seen is just, you said you wanted to end stars, but yeah, we have ended stars. You said that you have five demands, we are giving you five demands. No, that's, that's, we shouldn't ask that from our government. That's not what we should be expecting. We should be expecting them to actually be the ones saying, look, in the short term, this is what we're doing. In the midterm, this is what we're doing. In the long term, this is what we're doing. To the extent that we continue to have a reactionary response, right, um, what you're also going to have is that you're going to have more protests and other things because the government is indirectly telling us that um, they need us to rise up and tell them what to do, not only in terms of policing, in terms of education, in terms of the economy, in terms of electricity, in terms of a number of things. And do you expect the NBA to always be the ones to then come out and give um, you know, innovative direction? It wasn't the NBA we elected to lead the country. We elected the NBA to lead the bar. So the NBA having to step into that gap because it is consistent with their you know, focus on rule of law and protection of rights shows that they have to be of leadership. So I think that's the first step to start from. And I would say I would commend the NBA from, you know, stepping into that gap and at least offering a template, which one would they expect that governments would also adopt, work with them um, to actualize and execute. And just to add as well, you know, about the six day jump, it's not just the statement that has been made. Um, the NBA and NBA branches across the country have been involved in going to police stations to get people, um, you know, bailed out for being arrested, for exercising a right that they have, right? So you're being arrested for doing what is lawful. It's unheard of, right? And when you also juxtapose that with the fact that so many lawyers, friends of mine, you know, young lawyers, people who are just fresh out of law school are the ones risking their lives, going to police stations, in some instances being assaulted. Why? Because they're trying to bail out people. Of course, we can't demand that, we can't ask for that. So I think the NBA is stepping in is just um, you know, reflective of the fact that there has been a failure of leadership, not only in this issue, even in the number of other issues concerning rule of law, and even beyond that, issues concerning the economy. All right, I, 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 I want to bring in the, uh, of course, statements from the 
president of the NBA, Olumide Akpata, saying that uh, the actions of the security agencies will aggravate an already tense atmosphere among the protesters um, and those, of course, clamoring for um, action from government. Do, do you think you know, it could still get any worse than it currently is? Oh, well, um, it's possible, of course. Uh, first and foremost, the fact that, um, you know, we get lip service about the fact that, okay, look, SARS has been ended and the like, that's all well and good. But if people who are exercising a legal right on the road are being harassed, are being tear gassed, are being water sprayed, are being arrested, you know, are being assaulted, then it shows that, um, you know, the rot runs deep. And that rot that runs deep, you know, we're still a long way away, right, from, um, you know, basically solving that rot. Uh, it's a different ballgame if people are being arrested for criminal activities, and that's what the issue is. People are protesting. The right to protest is guaranteed under the Constitution, right? There are lots of cases, you know, Court of Appeal and the like, that have reaffirmed that right. So it's like saying that, look, I'm doing my work and someone came to arrest me and we're like, oh, would that aggravate tension? Of course it would aggravate tension because I'm doing something that is legal. So um, to the extent that um, the police does not rein in, um, you know, then it's, it's likely. And I would like to take a cue from what happened in Oyo State. I'm sure you all saw um, the video of the governor, Shea Makunde, you know, basically um, asking the police uh, you know, to stand back in terms of policing of the protests, just to seek to douse that tension. Well, um, I wouldn't say I commend it. What I would say is that the fact that we're having to have those statements shows that um, the professional police force that we all demand, desire, require um, in a 2020 country uh, is not yet there. Um, if we are having to ask them to stand back because we are unable to guarantee that they would exercise restraint when people are exercising a fundamental human right, um, then that shows the type of issues that we're battling with and it shows how far uh, we have to go in this struggle. All right, um, let's look at some of the submission put forward by the MBA. Uh, there is uh, the mid-term, mid-short-term and long-term plans in no particular yeah. order. I'm going to take on the one uh, that they talked about uh, opening up the detention centers, uh, which they referred to yeah. as abattoir, human abattoir um, in Lagos, yeah. in Abuja, yeah. in Fortakert and other places. Uh, do you honestly believe yeah. that this government with this protest will, be a will agree to opening up these detention centers for uh, lawyers and human rights activists to go there and see that things are being done transparently? Well, I would hope they do that. Um, because if they fail to do that, um, they have seen that, um, you know, my generation for a long time, we were called the lazy Nigerian youth. Well, I think it's a case that um, the lazy Nigerian youth have woken up and um, we're not ready to go back to bed. So if they fail to you know, follow through uh, with many of these demands and many of these promises, then one does not know what you know, lies ahead, right? Um, you know, I remember we saw what happened with, uh, when you had a group of frustrated youth and a frustrated country right now. Uh, so we, we can't go back to business as usual. And I need to um, put on record, right? You know, what we are asking for is not something that is out of the ordinary. You know, you can't have detention centers where people are alleged to have been slaughtered. You can't have detention centers where people are alleged to have been there for years and sometimes decades without trial. When your constitution says that, you know, you can't be held without, you know, more or less a conviction, you know, the cases to that effect. We pay lip service to the fact that, you know, within 48 hours, you should be tried to court. And you have a rural police unit um, that's basically a law to themselves. And um, even beyond the rural police unit, which is now the disbanded SARS, uh, you also have this issue running with police where, you know, to bail someone, you hear that bail is free, but at the end of the day, you realize that is not the case. You have instances where people are arrested and never found. They are never allowed to speak with their lawyers. 
and you even have a bigger issue of you know decongesting prisons generally. So you know, I think what government needs to understand is that this is not just about SARS, and this is not just about our grants. This is a call for them to do what they should have done long ago. The fact that we had you know more or less detention centers that are notorious across the country for being known as abattoirs, that um, not only people on Twitter, but you know, reputable organizations such as NBA, reputable organizations such as Amnesty International have verified to be so, shows that there has been a long-standing failure to shine light on something so problematic, but something so inherent to the fundamental human rights of Nigeria. So for me, the success is not them responding to our demands. I think the success will be when we see that they are thinking ahead, right? And not just going to meet our demands, but exceeding that, not only in terms of policing, in terms of army, in terms of everything else, you know, because I don't want the situation tomorrow where we then have to complain about, for instance, maybe the loan limit or salaries of senators or members of the National Assembly, and they're just responding to those demands alone. I want them to think ahead and bring some form of innovation that shows that, look, we're doing the work that you elected us to do, right? So that really is the call, you know, at the end of it all. Um, Michelle, do you think that the NBA um, has the capacity to ensure uh, that uh, those officers who have been accused of numerous atrocities, like you've mentioned, and of course my uh, colleague here also mentioned uh, abattoirs, as they have been described. Do you think the NBA has the capacity to ensure that those officers face the uh, full wrath of the law? Um, we've had numerous um, stories of parents who um, had their children arrested and never, never got to see them again. I, I was watching a story yesterday of a girl who said her brother was arrested with two of his friends in 2000, uh, 2007, 13 years after. You know, there's no word, they haven't been found, nobody knows where they are. So do you think the NBA can ensure that these people get justice? Uh, so to add to that, there was a submission on, on social media requesting that this be done publicly. Somebody even suggested the Oputa panel style, yeah. where we watch it like we watch a Big Brother Niger. So oh, yeah. all yes. of this. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, I, I think I'd like to start from um, the city's um, me, I think that would be the best approach uh, in order to have a sense of transparency. Uh, if you notice in the five for five, which has gone round now, which were the five demands, one of the asks was for um, an independent panel to basically investigate cases of abuses. Uh, that would be a fantastic starting point uh, for me, especially if the people that are placed on that panel are respected in society and with impunable integrity. On the other hand, in respect of whether the NBA has a capacity, uh, we have to understand that the NBA is basically now stepping into a, full, a role and a function that should ordinarily be the function of the state and the function of the government. So this is when you have um, more or less a concerned bystander waning to contribute. So to the extent that the NBA is going to do something, I think it is laudable. And I think that uh, their contributions will be very much appreciated. But the responsibility still lies upon the government to have that political will and the political execution. Without the government having the political will and political execution, then whatever efforts the NBA seeks to put forward uh, may not reap the bountiful harvests that we seek for. And even beyond the NBA, um, there are many non-governmental organizations, interest groups and the like that will want at this point in time to lend their support. And I think it is, um, prudent for the government to more or less aggregate all of the civil society um, you know, groups to more or less participate um, in you know, ensuring that the system is cleaned out. Um, only when we get there will we be able to say that truly um, we have been able to get a semblance of reform in the police force. 
Um, but as the NBA has stated in the long term, you know, to continue being a watchdog. Now, I think that is important because, um, you know, it, it's not required or it's a problem that um, we have to allow situations get so bad for people to then have to get on the streets before we are hurt. So to the extent that the NBA has volunteered to more or less consistently be that voice, even when the protests fizzle out, um, then that is worthy of a close. All right. Um, I, I, I want to just quickly ask about um, Olumide Akbata at a time like uh, this when um, there's narratives of other institutions of government not wanting to take any side, you know, as it stands, you know, because they don't want to be seen to be opposing government. Um, what does this mean for Olumide Akbata as the new NBA president and the NBA as an institution? Well, for me, I think, um, you know, a time comes where courage has to be exhibited. And um, one cannot always sit on the fence because um, even the fence that you sit on, <laughs> you don't know if the contractor stole the money and used substandard materials for you to fall. Therefore, um, I think what is important is for people to stand on the side of right and not looking to stand on the side of the government. Uh, for the NBA, I think they have stood on the side of right, and um, history should therefore be kind to them. Uh, but I want to state clearly that um, the NBA is not a government institution. Um, the NBA is the representative body of um, legal practitioners. And uh, legal practitioners are more or less guardians, should I say, of the constitution. If we don't have legal practitioners speaking up on issues such as this, then who then do we turn to? The Amen. courts, they say, is the last resort of the common man. But of course, it's the lawyers who advocate in those courts. And I think the best response to this um, were the words of the first Nigerian lawyer who goes by the name of Christopher Safara Williams. And he said that the legal practitioner lives for the cause of his people and the advancement of the cause of his country. Therefore, the NBA too should live for the cause of the people and for the advancement of the cause of the country Nigeria. All right, Mitchell, in, in the interest what, of um, time, has sought to. in the interest of time, I'm uh, sorry to interject, um, I, I need to ask That's this right. question. Um, government officials, um, the National Assembly uh, is coming up to say that uh, people should stop protesting. Uh, some elder statesmen, uh, statesmen rather, have come out to say uh, people should stop protesting. Reason given is that government seems to be listening. A panel has been set up. Um, um, there is um, a revamping, alleged revamping um, in the Nigerian police. SWAT has been um, announced that uh, retraining, uh, same thing that was being agitated for, has been ascended, acceded to. So people should um, go back home and give the government uh, the benefit of doubt. What do you say uh, to these suggestions? Is it time for people to shield their sword, give the government a benefit of doubt that they will implement some of these announcements being made? Well, for me, um, the beautiful thing about a democratic society is that um, we have the opportunity to share ideas and to share suggestions. Um, so they're, of course, well within their rights um, to give their suggestions. Um, also, those who heed those suggestions are also well within their rights. Uh, those who choose not to believe what the government has said and not to believe that um, they would follow through are also well within their rights to uh, remain on the streets. So I think that would be my response to that. All right. Um, thank you so much, uh, for sharing your thoughts uh, with us on this very, very uh, sensitive and uh, important issue in, uh, in the discussion across the country. Michelle Lagatis, a legal practitioner. Um, we hope to speak with you again. Many thanks for having me. And um, have a good morning. And you too. Um, good luck with the traffic.
Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> really good luck to the traffic. You, you felt uh, a bit of that uh, today. It's, 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 it's really, really intense, you know, and, and I expected this because going back home last night, so yesterday I had to stay a little while on the island um, or in VI, you know, so that the traffic will reduce. Unfortunately, I pushed it too far. Eventually started heading out of VI by around 8.30 p.m., um, I got to the toll gate expecting that it would be open. Um, protesters would have dispersed, you know, and maybe would assemble this morning. But they were still there. We were stuck there till 11.30 uh, p.m. I eventually passed at 11.30 um, when they eventually let, you know, let maybe like 12 cars um, pass and then I got home. Um, and they had said it last night that it was going to be locked all night till this morning. Quite um, unfortunate, really. And uh, the MBA, some of the submissions they've made, uh, for me, seems uh, very progressive. The five-point uh, request, also very progressive. I, for one, would strongly encourage the government to listen to the submission about making the dismissal of these officers, the prosecution of these officers who have been accused of you know, inhuman crimes against uh, citizens. Mm -hmm done publicly or put a panel style as yeah. some when i saw it, it just clicked with me i would agree that, that that would give you know credence to some of the things that they are saying that indeed they are listening to the people and they are going and some people say they don't really care how long it takes so long as it's done transparently yes. and then of course uh, the concern being expressed about swat uh, <laughs> so I, I would agree I, I with know. the with the, uh, the first point because I feel one of the reasons you know why the protest has ex, you know gone on for this long is because of the trust deficit that exists between the people and government. They don't believe anything the government says because of how many times they have you know not you know kept to their word. Um, another thing that I've also seen and it's one of the things Michelle mentioned was um, this seems like the NBA taking um, a stand where there is. Um, where, where government hasn't really been able to take responsibility and, you know, take a stand, you know, at a time like this. Uh, so, someone, someone would argue with you and say they have made pronouncements. You wanted the president to speak. He has spoken. You wanted SARS banned. It's been banned. You wanted deficit. a rejig. It's, it's, it's now been completely rejigged. You wanted a, a re-evaluation. I'll, I'll give you an example. Hold, hold, hold I'll give on. You, an you wanted a re-evaluation of these officers. These has been done. But I think the nail on the head is the issue of trust deficit yeah. and, it's and this so is long. this is one of the reasons um why there is the swat that was mentioned a few minutes after it was mentioned um the protesters changed to end swat and you know why because swat had already been mentioned in 2019 um, if you look through old st um, stories from the news, the IG had already mentioned that they had set up, you know, a SWAT team in 2019. So it's nothing new. It's not. This is not a new invention that they thought about to answer the questions. And so it already but in, in your thinking, seems what, like what, what, because uh, some of the request was the retraining and reorientation of these officers. Now, government. I'm not holding brief for the government. I'm just putting it as it is. Government had said. We will retrain these people. We've asked them to submit themselves for re-evaluation, reassessment, and all of that. What next should what other approach is expected? Aside from the fact that they are yet to speak on the public prosecution of these officers, um, some of the requests have been they've agreed that there will be compensation. In the uh, House of Representatives has said that they are going to insert the so, treatment so of some of these uh, people. Uh, that uh, have been uh, assaulted and so maltreated. We'll go back, to, we'll go back to the challenge that we've mentioned repeatedly is a trust deficit. And this is why the body language of the government doesn't show that these are more than just statements. Yeah, That's some really would, Some would it say is. it's more reactionary. Yes, it, it doesn't show that these are more than... Th these are really just statements from the body language of the presidency, from the body language of the governors. If the, gov if the president is making orders and... 30 seconds later, protesters are still being brutalized. If the state governor is giving orders and or the IGP is giving orders and two hours later, you still see SARS in traffic stopping people, then it really doesn't, you know, convince anyone. I don't know where we go from here, but we definitely need to move forward. Exactly. And in the coming days, uh, we hope to see uh, what happens, especially from the side of the government in response to aggrieved uh, young Nigerians. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.